morning. Um, thank you very much for joining me in this session. I know that many of you who have heard me talk at previous conferences know that I like to talk about technical stuff, such as database design and performance uh, engineering. But I really feel that the topic of money and investment is oftentimes overlooked or is a social taboo, and we're not talking about that at conferences like this. So I decided to be the rude American who is actually Swiss, who is going to talk about money and investment. I've been part of the investment community in all three roles. I've um, looked for investment, and I've raised quite a bit of capital. I'm actually in a big startup right now. I've advised as a technical advisor uh, for investments, for investment groups, and I've invested myself as well. So I really want just to share my stories, my personal stories with you, and hope that I can help you get your ideas to fruition. Just so you know, I had my fair share of successes, but more importantly, I failed dramatically a couple of times as well. All of this is just a quick word of advice for anyone that starts out on this journey. There are actually two statements that will contradict itself that I'm going to say right now. Statement number one, you will fail more often than you will succeed. Statement number two, it is impossible for you to fail. The reality is that both of these are absolutely true statements. Any VC, uh, venture capital person, will tell you that nine out of 10 businesses will fail. Nine out of every 10, 90% of all startups will fail. But failure is not really failure. Failure might be financial failure or not reaching your goals, but what you've gained and what we've all gained from our failures is the expertise that comes along with it that makes your next idea, the next implementation, significantly better. And I can tell you from my personal experience, most of the investors that I currently have for any of the projects are second time investors. Some of them, mo actually most of them, second time investors of the first failed investment. So a version two. You cannot fail, don't worry about failure, don't worry even during the preparation of the pitch. Don't worry about that. A few housekeeping items. If you have any question, please wait until the end and hopefully you forget. No, if you have any question, just ask. This is an open um, conversation that I want to have. And if you have a question that you don't want to ask in public, Come to me afterwards, I'm here through the entire conference. First of all, in here, who has a business idea that they're currently trying to um, raise money for? By raise of hands. Amazing. Um, how many of you have tried to already raise outside money? And when I say outside money, I mean outside money. Who thinks that their idea is Joomla specific? Okay. And then the other question is, is there anybody in here that is a designer by trade? Because you will see that many of these aspects here are design principles just transferred to a different domain. 
What I'm trying to do here is give you an overview of the pitch. So in, in an investment pitch, there is the pitch and there is the, the business plan and the financials. I'm really talking about just the original pitch, the first 15 minutes that you have to present your idea to the investor. And the four components of my pitch, and this is the first important lesson here, these are my views. In all of these things, it is all of these points are subjective points. These are my views. There are cultural differences. There are personal differences. You have to make your homework before you go to make your pitch to ensure that it adheres to the cultural, the current cultural norms of who you're pitching to. So the four components of my pitch revolves around team, the idea, the implementation, and the goal. Or in other words, the who, what, how, and when. Anyone that took um, literature in high school knows that this is actually storytelling. And the truth is that's exactly what you're doing when you're going for the first pitch of your idea. You're telling a story. Now, I'm talking about how an implementation, by, uh, but I call it presentation. And that is because this item, as opposed to the team idea and goal, is the only item that is solely based on trust and the narrative. Team, the idea, and the goal are all quantifiable and potentially qualifiable. These are facts. In the implementation, that's your story. That's where you're telling your story. So let's start talking about the team. You have to convince me, as the investor, that you have a team of knowledgeable people, people that are trustworthy, people that have great emotional connection to it, that love what they do and will be committed to the process, and a team that can display humility. And when I'm saying humility, I don't mean the self-loathing type. I really mean awareness. Awareness that there are other ways out there to do the same thing better. Okay? The team has to be coachable. I have a very good investor friend of mine, and she said, and I really, this is her piece of advice, and I really try to adhere very much to it and stress that. Any good investor should view herself or himself and be viewed by the founders as full partners. They're not money people. When you come to me for an investment idea, you do not just come for the money. And if you do, I will most likely reject. You come for another set of eyes, somebody that can help you get the idea from point A, your ideation stage, to the implementation. And this is very important. And when we're talking about the team, remember, you and anyone on the team during the stages of court, courting, of dating, you represent the entire team and the entire, uh, the entire business. And I'll tell you a little, a little story. I was sitting as a technical advisor for an a in, investment firm. Two people, two found, the two founders came in. Both of them were developers. And they were pitching an idea. And the idea was pretty solid, and the implementation that they had suggested was pretty solid. 
and they got rejected. And I was very confused. So I asked the investment board why they refused it, and they said, because they came in with wrinkly T-shirts. And I said, I, I don't understand. The idea was good. So they said, yes, the idea was good, but they're selling a banking industry item, which means they won't be able to sell it because the banking industry is not going to take them um, seriously enough. Now, I might not agree with this, and yes, I know that cultural norm, norm is that as a developer you can come with a t-shirt and, and, and flip-flops, and yes, it might even be that in this idea they have a salesperson that does that job for them and knows how to dress. The point, though, is during that initial 15 minutes that you have to, to introduce yourself to the investor, you represent the entire team. And that's not just physical attributes such as shirt, which I understand is an extreme example. But it's about knowledge and humility as well. Uh, another personal story, I, have a, I was in a failed um, startup that failed because the CEO at the time was talking about the idea and how they want to implement it in blockchain, even though blockchain was just a new statement, new word that was out, it was a marketing word, but he had no idea what the, the hind story of that was. He's not the technical person. I was. But he represented the entire team, which means he dragged my credibility down, which means they didn't want to invest. Let's go on to the idea phase. When you present your idea, you have to be clear, very concise, trustworthy, forwarding, make it an emotional statement, and explain to me what the competitive advantages are. When I'm saying clear and concise, your elevator pitch, your first 30 seconds in which you're explaining your idea to the investor, has to be one, one statement, one component. You have to assume that the other person has no idea about you or your product at all. Even if you think you know them, start from the bottom up and give the elevator pitch that is very simple and very concise. If you have a sentence, if your original idea has an and in it, that means that you're combining two ideas Two ideas is very hard to sell. Try to make it as concise as possible. And if we're talking about the designers in the room, we know like that's coming from the design world as well. If you need to convey two ideas, it's very hard to design for that. You're trying to design in order to convey one statement only. The next part, that's probably the hardest one for me. In the explanation, once you're get, getting outside of that original elevator speech, the 30 second sentence, don't be vague. Explain the entire idea. I had a very hard time doing this, and I call this the recipe syndrome. My mother, when she used to give out recipes for a dish that she was cooking well, she always left out one ingredient. So nobody could ever make the dish as well as she did. Sorry, mom. But, so for me, in, in an investment pitch, I'm coming in and I have that unease feeling and I'm going, I, if I'm giving away my secret ingredient, the investor is just going to take the idea and go on with it. The truth, though, is if I'm standing here trying to get investment from you, money, I want you to entrust me with your money, 
and oftentimes a large sum of it, I have to trust you that you're a good human being and not going to steal my idea. And by the way, if that feeling, if you don't have that feeling either, if there is any doubt talking to the investor, then it's not a good investment partner. And you have to back out, find a different investment partner. As a general um, suggestion, I always say be emotional in your pitch. Be animated. Tell a story. Be a storyteller. Tell your story or tell a story. How did you come to this idea? This story is going to make the emotional connection between you and the investor as to where that is coming from, where the idea is coming from. Be animated, love, hate, and do the fact that I'm in Rome. Be Italian, right? You know how to do it. Passion. And talk about competition. Even already as early in the stage as the idea stage. Tell me what your competitive advantages are. Because talking about competition explains to me, the investor, that you're actually, it's not just a waking up in the middle of the night with an idea pitch that you're coming to me. It's a well thought and well processed idea. It tells me that you're, uh, you're aware of the alternatives out there in the marketplace. And I'm giving it away. These four attributes in the idea correlate directly or reinforce directly the, the attributes, the required attributes that I need from the team. If you can clearly and concisely tell me what your idea is, that means that you have knowledge in the domain. You have domain expertise. If you're fully allowing yourself to, to explain to me the idea in its full, that means that you have integrity. You trust me, I'm significantly more likely to trust you that you can actually implement it. If you're telling an emotional story, I know that there is passion behind it, and it's not just something that you do to get on with your day. And if you're talking about your competition, I know that you're aware of the process. You're acknowledging other people's effort. And by the way, just as a side note, there is no idea in the world that does not have competition. Even if you're coming up with a brand new idea, the competition might be a, a, a level lower, but everything has competition. Let's go on with the, to the next stage, which, the, which is the implementation. And right in that transition, if there is any oddities, if there is anything that is not clear and simple to understand, to bridge between the idea and the implementation, this is the time to do it. So I see that I have a bunch of people here. I actually would like to try that out in an example, precisely at this point, where I'll give you an idea, my idea. My idea is a social icebreaker, let's say, right? That's just a, 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 an action that you can do in a group meeting to get people a bit less um, concerned or, or, and I need your participation in this. So the idea, again, the idea part is social icebreaker. So what I want you to do is, on count of three, introduce yourself to the person right behind you and shake their hands. One, two, three, now, please, do it. <laughs> ah.
So just one second, let's come back. Okay, let's come back just one second because I have a question for you now, if you don't mind. Who was able to introduce themselves? By raise of hand. Who was able to? You all failed. Because if you introduced yourself to the person right behind you by turning around, the person behind you didn't turn around. Other than Wilco, fine. So, I don't care about whether the idea was flawed, right? The idea might have been flawed, but the implementation actually worked out perfectly fine. Which means, if there is any gap in implementation of your idea that might differ from the intuitive way of thinking about the idea, in this stage right now, is this is the stage in which you're highlighting precisely this. Okay, does that make sense? Again, you have the idea, which is a clear, simple statement, social introduction or social icebreaker. You have an implementation plan that you're thinking of, and there is some sort of a mind gap between the two. This is where you bridge that mind gap, okay? And this is in the pitch, because you have to explain. You can't, most of the time, you can't actually act it out, but you can, you have to talk about that right now to make, to, to ensure that the investor understands the implementation of, or the implementation aspects of the, this idea. This is one of the most important things to remember in any pitch. And this is where mo oftentimes, especially Joomla projects that I've heard fail. Do not explain the tools, ever. Mention them if you need to. Remember I asked you before if you have a Joomla-specific idea? Even if you have a Joomla-specific, if you, even if you think you have a Joomla-specific uh, idea, but you're talking to a person outside of the Joomla community, don't mention Joomla. And I know that some people will hate me for this statement. But when you're talking about venture capital, Unfortunately, Joomla has positioned itself unfavorably. A investor that Googles Joomla Venture Capital to see how, how that even fares in the world, and they're getting, as a result, our statement of pride. They will look, which says that there is no venture capital, there is no board, there is no, there is no financial backing, which is great for the open source community, maybe as a messaging um, idea. Regardless, in your pitch, you just have a, a couple of minus points, okay? If it's not a specifically targeted to a Joomla audience, or you're not talking to a person in the community, don't even say that it's Joomla. It's PHP and MySQL. And if you need to defend the technology underneath, the underlying technology, talk about PHP and MySQL and say that, oh, it's equally as good, if not better, or whatever, than Java. Um, Wikipedia is using MySQL and PHP. Um, Pinterest is using MySQL for all of their data. The underlying question that you're trying to answer is, is the technology choice that I'm making a solid enough choice to get me to implement? I don't care what it is that you're choosing. You can choose any platform, WordPress, okay, not WordPress. Um, anything that you want, you can use Mac or, or Joomla or Drupal or Harry Potter. 
I don't care what it is that you do. If you're choosing a tool, they're all tools. If you're choosing a tool that you're proficient in and you can get me to implementation, I'll listen. As a marketing aspect, though, use household names when talking about your, your technology choices. PHP, MySQL, pretty household name. That's another one. Let's assume, though, that you have a very specific Joomla product. Or you're talking to a Joomla-specific audience. Stop using, please, stop using, three. we're doing 3% of the world web. The marketing message behind this for an investor that thinks about money is that 97% of the rest of the world decided not to ju you, you use Joomla. If you need to use the 3%, then translate that into a number, 20 million, 30 million, I don't know what the number is. Right? Three is a small number, bad connotation in a, in a pitch. What you should do is talk about the community when we're talking about Joomla. Or even when you're talking to a person outside of the Joomla community, right? Talk about the fact that whatever technology platform I chose or whatever um, platform I'm targeting is a very open community, very friendly. We have an enormous amount of very friendly people, very knowledgeable people. We have lots of user groups, which means we have a large talent pool. And for an investor that is, in, that is concerned with scalability of your idea, this is one of the biggest hurdles that any startup faces. You want to have a large talent pool that you coming that you can hire to do work for you, and Joomla has that. Don't mention by name; we just have it. One more time. In the implementation, talk about the business case, and not the tools that you're using to get there. And I'm stressing that over and over and over because. I can tell you even over the last year, I heard about te of 10 pitches that, that failed because of this. Right, and this is not Joomla specific. So the, the most recent one was Node, uh, a, a Node app. I don't care what you use, as long as you can come and have a product, and I believe that you can get that product done. And the last part of the implementation phase, of that third phase, is the question of where the money is going. This is not where you, you go into financials. This is not even where the goal, where you're discussing ultimate goals. This is just telling me where it is that my money is going in the implementation. I want to be insured that you're spending generously on the idea, but not fund yourself. And this is the segue into discussing goals. The hardest question that any potential startup owner has to ask himself and answer truthfully is, are you just funding your own job? Are you creating a job? Or even more, and this is, happens quite common, are you funding a job for you and a bunch of people and you want to create a successful business? Is that what you're trying to do? Because if that's what you're trying to do, investment might not be the right vehicle. An investor is in this to make money from money. Running a successful business that needs capital 
there's a whole bunch of other vehicles out there, and we'll discuss that in, in a quick second, and I'll explain that. But you need to make sure that the investment idea that you're having is really an investment idea and not just a business idea. And there is a massive and vast difference. Is what you're asking from me an investment or is it a loan? Now, anyone that just realized, oops, we actually want a loan, not an investment, all of these principles still apply because you have to apply for that loan in some way or fashion as well, which means all these design principles behind how to present the idea are still valid. But that's, in this stage, you need to convince the investor that this is investment worthy, not just loan worthy. Remember that statement? Nine out of 10 businesses fail, uh, startups fail, which means your successful startup has to pay for the other nine failed ones. So when you're thinking about what is the return and what you're giving the investor back, you unfortunately have to cover not only your business, but nine other failing businesses as well. What I as an investor am looking for, or the, the rule of thumb, is a tenfold investment of what your, the business owner, are, uh, is thinking of. And I know that sounds very harsh, but that's reality. I'll put that into numbers. Let's assume that you're raising $250,000 coins, right? This is a number that I assume that most of us ever had in our head and I said, oh, that's a nice investment, okay? And I have a projected um, revenue. Year one is zero, then 250, 350 and on. Okay, so let's put this through the test of how the investor sees this. And these are pretty decent numbers. $3.1 million in, in, in revenue, in net revenue after five years, I would be very happy with. Let's switch that around to the investor side. Remember the one in 10? which means when I'm investing 250, what I want back is two, two and a half million over the lifetime of the, uh, of the project. The lifetime of the project, of any project is about five years. So, and this, by the way, all of these numbers, these are, this is not a template of doing a, a pitch or a financial model. I'm just trying to explain what goes on in the mind of the investor. So, to get to two and two and a half million dollars uh, as, as profit, which would then constitute as profit, I need to make $500,000 every year. Now, the first year I'm not making this, which means I'm compounding this into this, which at the end of the, uh, of the project is in the green. But that's not true. This is on 100% revenue. I'm getting only 20%. Which means even though that originally the 3.1 million to us as founders and creators, that sounds amazing, especially for $250,000. Oh. The risk is skewed once you look, look, at from the other, uh, look at it from the other side, from the investor's side. So the truth is, this is still a solid investment if that actually comes to you. Because if all of this is hindsight, uh, after five years, you, you're making $620,000 on your $250,000 investment, it's a pretty decent investment. 
but it's just the mindset that has to change in our, when we go out to get, to try to get investment, our mindset has to change and look at it from the other side. When you're pitching the goal, and I'm saying that over and over, think about the investor. But everything is up for negotiation. Once you presented the idea and you came up with some sort of a convincing story that you're telling the investor, Always remember, you can always negotiate. Now, that means that in your goal, keep negotiation room for yourself. Don't be very um, conservative. Be conservative on your end to make sure that you have the negotiation room afterwards. Okay? And simple to recapitulate all of this into one slide. Don't forget. You represent the team. Likewise, look at the investor as an equal partner in the success of your idea. And by the way, I'm just giving you a quick side note here. They are. They're not just a 20% partner. They're a 100% partner in the success of your idea because they want you to be successful as much as you want you to be successful once they're invested. This is a great ally to have. Love simplicity. When talking about your idea, concise and simple. And tell the story. And when talking about the implementation, and I know that I'm just highlighting the bad parts, but I think that's where we all, we oftentimes fail. I'm stressing again, stop talking about the tools and start talk, talking about the business case. And make sure that you convince that the dollars or the euros or the yens are going to the idea, not to the founder. quick aside here as well. And this is a cult depend totally dependent on culture. In the US, if you're saying, I'm not taking any salary during that time, that's a massive warning sign. This is not good. Because if you're not taking a salary, that means you're doing something else, which means you're not invested in the product. Now, that doesn't take into consideration reality. You might just have won the lottery and you don't need the money. Or for that matter, you, your, your spouse is, is bringing in the money. That's not the point. Now you have to explain why. In your pitch, Take a salary, a small salary, to make sure that you can survive. But take a salary. And this is, again, very specific to the US. Um, I don't know how it's looked upon in other cultures. Keep that in mind. Taking, at least think about what does it look like when you're saying, I'm not taking any salary. The founders are not taking any salary. Think hard if what you need is an investment or a loan. And then negotiate. And I'll just say one or two more things about the investment versus loan, because I think that that's, um, for me, was very helpful with a whole bunch of endeavors. There are many, many financial tools available that are not investment. There are small business loans. There are state, there are state or government-sponsored loans. There are regular bank loans. There are loans against contracts. 
which means against future income. All of them with various degrees of risk. But before you go into the investment, the, down the investment route, check out what other options you have for two reasons. Number one, because if it's the incorrect vehicle, most likely you will not get funded. And two, if you have a better option of funding your business or your idea, and you do not have to give up 20, 30, 40, 50% of your business, why not use them? Um, almost every place that I know, they have a chamber of commerce or something like that. So it's a, uh, an organization, a local organization that helps businesses. That's the first place you should go prior to even thinking about investment. Government, especially for small businesses. And we're not here talking about multi-million invest, I assume we're not talking here about multi-million investments. We're talking about rather small investments. There are many, many, many pro um, projects out there that would fund something like this in a loan type of deal. And the last thing that I would want to leave you with is think about how much money you're actually fundraising. How much money do you need? And what are you asking for? And here is a hard lesson learned. It is easier to raise a million dollars than a hundred thousand dollars. And that's just because from the investor's side, the return, the potential return of a million dollar makes the investment worthwhile. So you have to find that balance of how much you're actually asking for. And sometimes you ask for more than what you need. And you can ask for the investment for more than what you need in installments, right? Everything, so let's go a teeny bit into the financial planning of this. This does not have to be a one-time cash upfront investment. Most of the time it isn't. So there are a whole bunch of financial negotiations that you have to tailor now to your specific needs the needs of your current needs of the business and the expansion needs of your business. And that's all my time anyway. I'm just five minutes over, so perfect. Thank you very much.